I was well prepared to take command of the USS Olympia. Nuclear-powered fast attack submarine, 1999. For a year, all I'd done was study the piping, the procedures, the people, and every problem the ship had ever had. Unfortunately, I didn't take command of the USS Olympia. I took command of the Santa Fe, because at the last minute, there was a shift. <laughs> and I found myself on a much newer and unfamiliar vessel. Never mind, I would just bluff my way through it. And the day came to get underway. And I went and I found the engineer. And I said, in a very loud and confident, authoritative voice, engineer, start up the reactor. He went off and started up the reactor. And a couple hours later, I found the XO. XO, make all preparations to get underway. I went up on the bridge at the right time. Get underway. We cast off from the pier. Clear the bridge. We went below. Submerged the ship. We dove under the ocean. A head flank. The officer deck ordered a head flank. Helm a head flank. Aye. And back in maneuvering, the throttleman was winging open the throttles. And the steam from the steam generators went into the main engine. And the ship torqued over because of, heeled over because of the torque. We surged through the depths of the Pacific. It was awesome. I felt good. <laughs> well, the next day, the very next day, we're going to run a drill. We're going to shut down the reactor due to an imaginary fault. And my technicians are going to have to fix it. And when we shut down the reactor, you shift to a backup motor, the EPM, which runs off the battery. So I'm standing in the back of the control room, and everything seems to be going fine, and I'm kind of getting bored. And I start thinking, which is, anyway, I start thinking, and I say, <laughs> thinking to myself, you know, we, I can't let these guys think their new captain's a softy. So I'm thinking if we speed up on the EPM, it's going to draw more current, it's going to drain the battery faster, it's going to create what I like to think of as a sense of urgency in the restoration of the reactor, because there's no you know, extension cord. Um, so I, I grabbed the officer deck, who's the navigator. He's, I've been on the ship the least, and he's been on the ship the longest. He's been on the ship for over two years. Senior department head. I say, hey, Nav, let's give those nukes something to think about. I had two-thirds on the EPM. And he orders it. Helm, I had two-thirds. Nothing happened. Very astutely, I recognize nothing's happening. <laughs> and I can't really see the helmsman because number two periscope's in the way. So I lean to the right, and I look, and I can see, and I can, I, he's kind of, I can see his shoulders are tight. And he's almost squirming. And I say, Helm, what's um, happening? He says, he's facing away. He says, Captain, there is no two-thirds on the EPM. I had made a mistake. Unlike the, every other ship I'd ever been on, there's no two-thirds on this ship. So of course I pl pl good job. Like, I pretended it. <laughs> you passed the test. So I, um, so uh, what I do next? I grab the nav, I say, hey, nav. Did you know there was no two-thirds on the EPM? Yes, sir, I did. So, so my, my arms are flailing at this point. Like, why did you order it? Because you told me to. Because you told me to. And it was a moment of clarity unmatched in my life. Because at that moment, I realized we had a crew that was trained for compliance and a captain that was trained for the wrong ship. And that was a deadly combination. We were going to die if we didn't fix it. So as soon as the drill was over, I gathered all the officers. We went down to the war gym. I said, hey, here's the problem. They already knew the problem, so I was just talking for myself. <laughs> that 
And I said, we're going we're gonna to turn everything around. I, I, we're gonna, instead of me taking, I'm going to give control. So I stopped giving orders. I said, I'm going to not give one. The only order I would give is the final order to launch ordinance because I felt the responsibility for killing other human beings was not one that I could pass off. Every other order I stopped giving. I refused to give the orders. We re replaced it instead with the officer saying, I intend to, and eventually the crew, and then the chief, you know, everyone would say, I intend to blank. And we were very proud of these briefs, right? Gather around the chart table. The enemy's here. We're going to go here. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. Any questions? Never any questions. But that's me telling you what your job is. So we got rid of all briefs. And we replaced it instead with the subordinates telling the superiors in the chain of command what they were going to do, what they thought might happen. 